The open ocean is a terrifying place. Raging storms and rogue waves constantly threaten anyone brave enough to set sail on it. But there are worse things, much, much worse things, lurking deep beneath the surface. And when they decide to make a move on boats, ships, and rafts in their territory, the footage and pictures have to be seen to be believed. So get your water wings ready as we take a look at some real sea monsters caught attacking boats on camera. Great White Fright There's nothing quite like sailing on the open sea. Fresh air, blue skies, a big shark declaring war on your boat. Wait, what was that last one? This fishy footage takes us to Hwaraki Gulf in Auckland, New Zealand. In 2015, a toothy terror took a liking to this fisherman's boat. Angry. He's coming at the motor. Oh, he's angry. He just went to bite the motor. Maybe the shark was trying to get at some tasty treats the fisherman caught. It wouldn't be surprising considering sharks have a tremendous sense of smell. If a single drop of blood falls into a small swimming pool, you bet they can smell it. I'm the same whenever Mrs. Be Amazed whips up a cake. Eventually, the Great White grew bored of chewing on their motor and swam away. I guess there isn't that much nutritional value in metal. A similar story of a shark-based scare comes from 2020 when a group of explorers were sightseeing and seal spotting off the coast of Tasmania, Australia. The nature enthusiasts were sailing on a big, sturdy fishing boat. Perfectly safe, right? After taking the footage back to shore, experts identified the sea beast as a 9 to 15 foot long great white shark. 15 feet? That's twice as long as Shaquille O'Neal is tall. Imagine what a great basketball player it would have been if only it had arms and legs. So what was the problem? The boat was right in the midst of the shark's hunting territory. In other words, they were sailing in the middle of a buffet. Luckily, this great white only had an appetite for seal meat, so the startled sailors didn't end up on the menu. Usually, great whites hunt by ambushing their prey. The predators position themselves underneath their target, then leap out of the water with the doomed animal trapped between their seven rows of teeth. Yikes. What brave words did this courageous crew have to say of their terrifying encounter? We were lucky to get away unscathed, but we need new undies. So would I, my dudes. So would I. A load of bull shark. Are you ready for some more disastrous fishing adventures? I know I am. From the safety of my cushy recording studio, that is. Let's rewind to 2015 and head over to the St. Lucie Inlet in Florida. It was here that Captain Ben Chansey was innocently fishing for Goliath Grouper, a common member of the sea bass family. But what happened to Captain Ben was anything but common. Little did Ben know that the bait he was using attracted the attention of a hangry seven-foot bull shark. The predator took hold of the bait and whacked the vessel with its tail. A bullfight like no other ensued as the shark tossed the captain's raft around the water before throwing Ben into the sea. He managed to get back to the boat, but then for some reason, he got back into the kayak and then started wrestling again with the same shark. Well, they do say there's a thin line between bravery and foolishness, don't they? In 2015, there was an increase of shark attacks off the coast of North and South Carolina. In total, 11 people were attacked, the biggest figure since international shark attack file records began 80 years ago. This could have been due to hotter, saltier waters which attracted the sharks. The captain was wise to make a swift retreat when his vessel capsized. Although bull sharks are smaller than great whites and tiger sharks at 5 to 8 feet, they're also one of the meanest. These thuggish fish have a bite force of 1,350 psi, the strongest bite force of any shark. If that weren't bad enough, they're the most likely of all the sharks to attack humans. Hey, you don't get called bullish for being friendly. Imagine how this story would have turned out if the bull shark preferred the taste of the captain over the grouper. Oh dear. 
Hammer time. Do you ever get that feeling like you're being watched? Or worse, stalked? Back in 2013 on the coast of Pompano Beach, Florida, a group of friends were out kayaking in the sea, but something wasn't right. They could see it in the water. Then it hit them. Coming after you now, Bennett. It's a hammerhead, dude. What is it? It was a hammerhead shark. It continued to stalk one of the kayakers and snap at his paddle. A struggle between man and animal began until the kayaker managed to bat the shark away with his trusty oar. The largest of these crazy looking carnivores is the Great Hammerhead, which can reach an average length of 13 feet, which is twice the length of a king size bed. Ah, the tail sticking out. A hammerhead's distinctive appearance is partly due to a highly sensitive network of sense organs called ampullae of Lorenzini, a feature possessed by other shark species as well. This allows them to sense electrical fields produced by prey. Maybe that kayaker just had an electrifying personality. Another hammerhead hunt comes from 2015 in Santa Barbara, California. Mark McCracken was out fishing on his kayak. Well, hammerheads must really have a thing for kayaks when a particularly vicious shark suddenly attacked. Mark had to hit the shark over 20 times with his paddle before it left him enough room to move towards land. Even after the quaking and Mark had reached safety, the shark continued to swim in a shallow area of water near the coast. There's the beach. There's the shark. That's not good. That's not good at all. But I'm going in because I don't like this guy at all. Now, luckily, attacks like this are rare since hammerheads and humans don't coexist in the same ecosystems. It must have been acting out of mallet. <laughs> you know, like malice. I admit, I didn't exactly nail that one. If you want to hear some more incredible animal facts, and maybe puns, then be sure to click those like and subscribe buttons down below. Now let's get back to those savage sea monsters. Pennyped Piracy Have you ever heard of a pennyped? Don't answer, I can't actually hear you. Pennypeds are the family of marine mammals that include seals, sea lions, and walruses. While orca love to chow down on them, these pennypeds are less happy about it and will go to any means to avoid it even commandeering naval vessels. Unfortunately, most ships aren't made to handle these types of sailors and can often end up capsizing. In 2018 at Vancouver Island, Canada, Nikolai Coutinho was sailing with his friends without a care in the world. But along the way, they came across a funny looking stowaway. The seal was seeking refuge from hungry orcas, so the group decided to help the little guy out. They followed local advice to switch off their motor and waited whilst five orcas circled the boat for around 45 minutes. Considering that an orca can grow between 23 and 32 feet long and weigh over six tons, I don't think fighting them off was an option. In the end, the killer whales were tired of waiting and swam away but the Tamora seal remained there for another hour before finally returning to the water. I, for one, don't blame him. Another tale of a pennyped running, well, swimming for cover, comes from 2022 in Vancouver, British Columbia. In an attempt to escape these dastardly dolphins, a panicked sea lion did this. After this attempted hijacking, the boat managed to rewrite itself with the two soggy crew members intact. Their vessel may have been full of water, but the pair motored away as quick as they could towards shore with the sea lion following after, though the weary wanderer eventually gave up the chase. I can't help but imagine what's worse, pursued by a sea lion or an orca. Ha, <laughs> never mind, that, that's obvious. Now we rewind again to 2017 near Boyer Island in Howe Sound, British Columbia. <laughs> the 
those massive orcas are pummeling that boat because they want to munch on a frightened sea lion hiding aboard it. To escape the hungry leviathans, the boat carefully sailed closer to Boyer Island. Here, the sea lion could safely reach the shore. The poor creature was injured but lived to see another day. I think I'm going to avoid whale watching for a while. I don't want to be taken hostage by a crew of scurvy seals. Kayak Catastrophe Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a race when, as you're about to cross the finish line, a monster comes out of nowhere and makes a grab for you? No? Well, you've clearly never been to Australia. Because back in 2022, over in Adelaide, 19-year-old Nathaniel Drummond was kayak racing at Seacliff Beach, but something in the water did not want him to cross that finish line. He was only 30 seconds into the race when what he described as a big shark flung him into the water about half a mile from the shoreline. Before the shark could attack again, his fellow competitors hoisted him onto their surf skis and brought him back to the safety of land. While Nathaniel was unharmed, the same couldn't be said for his surf ski. Whoa, the shark bit directly below where Nathaniel was sitting. It's safe to say that it was a close one. I can't imagine a worse boat to be in if a shark attacked, except maybe an inflatable raft. Ooh. Thankfully, that's just a mock-up of a particularly awful nightmare I had. If this story wasn't incredible enough, the shark left a tooth and bits of its flesh behind in the ski. To determine what type of shark the beast was, these samples were taken to the Marine Biology Department at Flinders University in Adelaide. Can you guess what species it was? That's right, the old classic, a great white. Jeez, talk about playing into stereotypes. To be fair, not all sharks are aggressive. Look how docile this guy found in the harbor of Cape Cod is. That's you, we were just talking about that. My mind is like right on it. Oh I'm my God. I don't get... Look at the size of that. Look at him. Though I'm not sure I'd want to be in the water with him. Tickle me ink. Now, I've done a lot of stupid things in the past and ended up with egg on my face. But ink? Nope. Well, that's what happened to one hapless fisherman in 2021 in Frankston, Australia, where he wrangled the wrong octopus. Oh my. It's nice to see how concerned his fellow passenger is. No need to worry. The only thing that got damaged was the dude's pride. Octopus are cephalopods, and despite being familiar to humans for millennia, we still know very little about these squiggly squirters. So how and why did the moody mollusk shoot out its sticky substance? Well, some cephalopods have unique organs called ink glands. Ink is used as a defense mechanism against predators like that unfortunate fisherman. The ink gland cells continuously make ink, which is then emptied into the ink sac. The ink sac feeds into the rectum, <laughs> yeah, I said rectum. In some situations, the ink is combined with mucus. When an octopus thinks something is about to pounce, it shoots the ink out of its rear end. Though, don't threat, this guy didn't get a face full of doo-doo. I don't think YouTube would let me get away with showing that. The only thing that guy and his boat got was a healthy shot of ink, and maybe a bit of mucus. Nice. Scientists are not quite sure what effect ink has on potential attackers. Cephalopods might use this as a distraction for a quick getaway or the mucus in the ink could clog up a fish's gills. Either way, all this talk of mucus and rectums has put me off my egg. Got the hump. Kayakers beware, you're under attack again. Maybe get a less delicious looking boat next time? Just look what happened in 2015 in Monterey Bay, California, USA. Two tours, Charlotte Kenlock and wildlife film director Tom Mustel were humpback whale watching on their kayaks. Then one of the whales decided to get a bit too close for comfort. He knocked it over. Miraculously, the pair survived and were returned to shore, understandably shaken. The instructor gave them hot chocolate and a free hat, and I suppose that makes it a little better. Humpback whales can weigh 40 tons and grow over 60 feet long, which is taller than the letters in the Hollywood sign. After the incident, Tom said, imagine something bigger than a bus hovering above you, blocking the sun. 
The only thing my brain registered was quite calmly that when it came down, I was going to die. I don't think I would have remained so calm. There are many theories for why whales breach. Could be to get rid of parasites, to communicate, to fight, or even to show off. Humpbacks are usually placid animals, so such an act of aggression towards humans is really rare. Oh. <laughs> huh, maybe a little less rare than I thought. Tom went to talk to whale expert Professor Joy Reidenberg about that day. She explained that whales usually breach in two ways, chin slaps where they land on their neck and full breaches where they land on their back. The whale that struck Tom and Charlotte performed a full breach, but rotated midair and landed on its comparatively soft throat instead of its skull. Professor Joy explained that this is unusual behavior and shows that the whale may have been surprised by the kayaker's presence. As Dr. Joy put it, I think you two survived because the whale cared about trying not to hit you. There you have it, humpbacks are nice after all. As for Tom, he said that he still has flashbacks to that unbelievable event, but it did not put him off humpback whales, if anything his interest only grew. It's strange that we search so avidly for aliens outside of this planet while knowing so little about the workings of these enormous thinking animals in the sea. A whale shark of a time. Pop quiz, what's your favorite animal? Dog, cat, turtle, pedestrian answers. <laughs> for me, it's the whale shark. They're big, beautiful, and wouldn't hurt a fly. These fantastic fish are known for their mahoosive size, usually reaching up to 40 feet in length. That's twice as long as a giraffe is tall. Ugh, I'm glad other sharks can't grow that big. Can you imagine if something as creepy as a ghost shark could grow to that size? I'm getting seasick just thinking about it. While it's not known just how long whale sharks can grow, the largest ever recorded was 61 feet long. That's as tall as 12 Danny DeVitos. That gives me an idea for a twin sequel. Although incredibly intimidating in size, whale sharks pose no threat to humans. Well, someone should have told this guy. <laughs> what this clueless coward should have known is that despite their name, whale sharks don't go around chomping on meat like their ravenous relatives. Instead, these big beauties suck plankton-rich water into their mouths like a giant underwater hoover. As they do this, they gobble up tasty microorganisms and expel water through their gills. These sea creatures have this down to such a fine art that researchers even believe that they cough to remove bigger pieces lodged in their gills. <laughs> How weirdly cute. Whale sharks are so chill, some even let humans catch a ride on their backs, though this has been discouraged by sea life experts since it could lead to the creature becoming injured. In truth, it is more likely a boat will damage a whale shark by bumping into them rather than the other way around. That's not all. Numbers are threatened by hunting in parts of Asia and from ingesting plastic waste in the ocean. This has all led to a population decline of 50% in the last 75 years. Their coughing can only get them so far, guys, so let's take better care of them. Tuskmaster I'm pretty bad with directions. I've even gotten lost on my way to my own bathroom, a few times. But even I've never been as lost as our next blubbery subject. Meet Wally the Walrus, a hulking heap of sea meat weighing in at a gut-busting 1,800 pounds. Wally first made headlines when he appeared off the coast of Valentia Island, Ireland in March 2011, nearly 2,000 miles from his Arctic habitat. And let me tell you, the Irish habitat wasn't ready for him. Yes. He's on. Oof, looks like me trying to fit into a seat on a roller coaster. This Arctic Titan has a terrifying penchant for boarding boats, and boy, they ain't built for him. Wally's menacing 1,800-pound bot is about as heavy as two grand pianos, meaning he wrecks almost every vessel he climbs aboard. But Wally got around too, spotted in Wales, France, and the Cornish Isles of Scilly. His reputation for destroying dirigibles also preceded him, and while folks found Wally impressive, they still knew to be cautious. Despite constant rejection, however, Wally kept coming back. A 
Occasionally, he'd still find places to snooze, just so long as they could support his impressive physique, that is. He became such a problem in Cornwall that, whilst he was in Scilly, a special pontoon was created just for him. So he'd stop invading frightened fishermen's boats. Cornish fishing boats can sometimes have a maximum load of just 660 pounds, meaning Wally would outweigh their limit by nearly three times if he boarded. Wally's last known location in September of 2021 was in Iceland. This is good news as it means Wally is a little closer to home than he was before. It's theorized Wally may have ended up in a Western Europe after hitching a ride on a floating iceberg and getting lost. Maybe all this boat business is just him trying to Uber home. Nomura jellyfish, please. Hey, do you know what fish goes well with peanut butter? A jellyfish. <laughs> Whilst most of us can appreciate my stunning joke, the Japanese crew of the Daisen Shensho Maru would not be amused. In 2009, this 10-ton trawler capsized off the coast of Chiba after her net was overloaded with Nomura's jellyfish. The three crewmen survived after another vessel came to rescue them, but they had to get pictures of the entire ordeal in case no one believed them. So, how could a ship be so easily overcome by a bunch of spineless blobs that are 95% water? Well, Nomuras are one of the largest species of jellyfish in the world. They can measure over 6 feet in diameter, and what's more, they can weigh up to 440 pounds. That explains the capsizing. Jellyfish are causing fishermen and their business quite the headache. Their toxic stings leave fish inedible and can pack a nasty punch for fishermen. Damage to fishing equipment can cost the industry over $70 million a year. Whoa, I thought the trail of destruction I left behind after a night out was bad. That is, if I ever went out. <laughs> the presence of jellyfish are becoming more prevalent all over the world and not just in Japan. Check out these surfer dudes who tried to sail through swarms of red-belled jellyfish in West Australia. Are you serious? I don't think they got much surfing done in those waters. Jellyfish thrive in the warm, deoxygenated waters that global warming brings, and the decline in natural predators such as sea turtles means there is no one to keep the numbers of these jumped-up jellies in check. So, what have the Japanese done about this? They built a robot to fight them, of course. In 2022, Hiroshima Institute of Technology created Jeros, a jellyfish elimination robotic swarm. These three-foot-long robots will use ultrasonic sensors and AI to hunt down their wobbly prey. Once a jellyfish is found, Jeros will suck it up with a giant hose where its internal turbines will rip the condemned Nomura to pieces. Wow, brutal. Jeros is expected to be operational by 2024, though some activists believe that this date should be changed to never. In fact, Jeros might make the problem worse. Bush jellyfish could litter the seafloor, continually stinging people and marine life. This may sound crazy, but maybe the best solution is to try and stop climate change, rather than create a deep sea terminator. Now think about this, what do you do when you're on public transport, cleaning your house, or you generally just can't stare at a screen? Do you still want to learn amazing facts and have your mind blown? Well, I've got the solution. Be Amazed is now available in podcast form. Look up Be Amazed on all major podcast platforms. Follow us now on the podcast platform of your choice and you'll have the chance to win $500 of Amazon vouchers. We're giving $100 vouchers away to five lucky winners. All you need to do is slide into my DMs on Facebook or Instagram with a screenshot showing that you follow the Be Amazed podcast and left a top rating. Hurry, the competition ends on the 30th of September. Winners will be chosen at random and announced via our Facebook page. I don't know about you, but I'm sticking to dry land for a little while. Have you heard of any sea monsters that have brought a fishing trip to a frightful finale? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe for more amazing content. Thanks for watching.